In this lecture, we are going to discuss how to do the dot product or the inner product in NumPy. To start, let's create some one-dimensional arrays so we have some data to work with. So it's going to be a equals np dot array one two. Three, four. Now, the first thing we can try, if you didn't know anything about NumPy, is to use the direct definition. That is, we want to multiply the two arrays element-wise and sum those results together. So let's start by creating a variable called dot and initialize that to zero. Next, let's loop through both arrays A and B in corresponding order using the zip function. So that's for E, F, and a zip A, B. And then inside this loop, we're going to accumulate the result in dot. So that's dot plus equals E times F. And finally, we're going to print dot so we can see the result. And as you can see, the result is 11. So you may want to check that by hand if you haven't done so already. Now, another important operation in NumPy is indexing. Sometimes in Python, we want to just loop using the integers 0 up to the size of the vector. In this case, we wouldn't need to use the zip function. So let's see how that works. So we set dot equal to 0. And then next, we'll loop using an index from 0 up to the size of a. So we say for i in range len of a. And then inside the loop, we do dot plus equals a of i. So that's how you access an element times b of i. And then we print the result again. OK, and we get the same result as expected. Now, of course, at this point, you might wonder, what will happen if I use the usual multiply operator, the asterisk, to multiply a and b? Well, let's give that a try. So we do a star b. Okay, so this looks like it does element-wise multiplication. Not unexpected, given what we've learned previously. However, we can use this result, since the dot product is just the sum of these elements. So let's do np.sum a times b. And of course, that gives us 11, as expected. One nice thing about NumPy is a lot of these functions are also instance methods, so you can call them on the NumPy array object directly. So we can just do a star b dot sum, and that gives us the same answer. Now this is just exercise, but of course there's an actual dedicated function in NumPy for doing dot products, which is just called dot, unsurprisingly. So we do np dot dot a b and that gives us 11. So just like above the dot function is also an instance method so we can do a dot b and that still gives us the same result. Finally in newer versions of numpy there's an operator you can apply that does the dot function as well but uses a symbol so in particular, it's the at symbol. So we do a at b, and we get the same result. Now, if you've studied linear algebra geometry, you know that there's an alternative definition of the dot product, namely that the dot product of a and b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between a and b. Of course, we don't actually know the cosine of the angle between a and b, but we do know all the other values from which we can calculate the cosine. So that's normally what we would use this for programmatically. So let's see if we can do this. First, we need to know how to find the magnitude of a vector. As you know, that's just the square root of the sum of all the elements squared. Luckily, we've already covered all the operations necessary to do that. So this is your first opportunity to apply what you've learned so far. So we can say, a magnitude equals mp dot square root of a times a 
dot sum. By the way, this is also a dot product. So let's print out a mag. Okay, so it's 2.236. Now, being such a fundamental operation, NumPy does already have a function to do this. It's located in the module linalg, which, as you can tell by its name, contains linear algebra tools. So let's do np.linalg.norm and pass an A. And as you can see, we get the same answer. So now that you know how to find the norm of a vector, we can calculate the cosine of the angle. So we say cos angle is equal to a dot b divided by the norm of a times the norm of b. Okay, and let's check the result. Okay, now this is the cosine of the angle. So if we want the actual angle, we need to do an arc cosine. So let's do angle equals np dot arc cos, cos of the angle, and print out the angle. Okay, so that's the angle. And you might want to double check this, but I'm pretty sure this is in radians and not degrees.